Today we're making visual texture leaves. This is part one. You're going to start out with a big piece of paper with your name on it, some crayons, and some leaves. Mrs. Celeste collected these especially for the project. Please be very careful with the leaves because they are breakable and we want other students to use them too. Go ahead and pick out a crayon. Your crayon must not have paper around it. So see this crayon doesn't have any paper. This one does, so don't choose any crayons with paper on them. We want our crayons to be completely bare for this project. Choose a leaf and you're going to put the leaf underneath your paper. And go ahead and feel around so you remember exactly where it is. Now you'll take your crayon, and we're not going to use these crayons like you usually hold crayons, like that. We're going to use them different today. This is the right way to use the crayons today. We're going to hold them sideways, just like this. Sideways on the paper. We're going to hold down the paper with our helper hand, and then we're going to push the crayon over where the leaf is. Push and pull. Use your muscles for this so the color really shows up. Push and pull the crayon sideways. This is why we don't have paper on these crayons because otherwise it wouldn't color on the side. When you're done with one leaf, you can put it away and pick another leaf and another crayon color. Please put your old color back before you pick a new one. What we're doing now is called a texture rubbing. So we're rubbing the crayon over the leaf to show its visual texture or the way that it feels. Keep using leaves and keep coloring over them, making these texture rubbings. You can even do two colors at once if you want. Keep making texture rubbings until your paper is pretty much all filled up. You can even overlap, that means you can do leaves over other leaves. That's pretty cool. And use whatever colors you want as well. You want to see leaves all over your big piece of paper. Now I'm satisfied with how this looks. The paper is pretty filled up with colorful texture rubbings of leaves. Make sure all your crayons are back in the container when you're done and that you gather up all your leaves so Mrs. Celeste can collect them at the end. Now you've made a texture rubbing. Here's part two. We're going to have our texture rubbings that we made and we're also going to be using liquid watercolor paints. So here's what they look like. First thing you should do is open up the liquid watercolors really carefully. They just have little pop tops on them. So very, very carefully open them up. And you'll take your paintbrush out of the water bucket. When you do, it's going to be drippy and wet. So what you can do is gently, gently rub it on the side of the bucket so that it's not so wet and drippy. Now you can choose your first color. Let's see, I'm going to dip into the yellow here and then I'll put it on my paper. When I spread the watercolor paint on my paper, I'm going to do it really gently and slowly, back and forth, back and forth, just like this. Side to side, back and forth. You can grab more yellow here. Keep going with the yellow. I think it looks nice. Notice how the crayon still shows through. This is called a wax resist. Crayons are made of wax, so they resist the uh, watercolor. That means that they don't get covered up by it. So I'm gently spreading my yellow on the paper. And now I'm feeling like I want a different color. So here's what I'm going to do to get a different color. First thing you need to do before you dip into a new color is wash off your brush in the water. It should sound silent. You shouldn't hear anything while you're washing your brush, so you're gently swirling it around. Then, of course, rub it on the side of the bucket again very gently to get those drips off. And then you may dip into a different color. I'm going to do orange next. And then gently I'm going to spread the orange over the paper. 
Again, you can see the leaves are showing through. Got a few drips there. I'll just kind of spread those out. It's okay if it drips. Now, as you're gently spreading your paint over your paper, I want you to check a couple of times to see if your brush has a good hair day. It's got a good hairdo. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Gently, gently spreading. Check your brush. That's a good hair day. It's nice and sleek and slicked back, looking great. Now, if you're kind of using your brush rough and scraping it around on the paper, your brush is going to end up with a bad hair day. Look at that. It's all over the place. Brushes don't like having bad hair days. So while you're using your paintbrush, always make sure that it has a good hair day when you lift it up. So I'm going to check. Nice. Nice and slicked back. I'm going to speed up the video while I finish the rest of my painting. Always remember to wash your brush off every time you pick a different color. This helps the paints stay nice so they don't get mixed up. And cover your whole paper with paint. When you're done you can put your brush back in the bucket and Mrs. Celeste will show you how to take your art to the drying rack. Close up your watercolors when you're all done and then wipe your hands off with a baby wipe. And that's the end of your very first kindergarten art project.